Hello and welcome back to Quarterlight. Today we're going to look at the Austin Allegro. The Austin Allegro was produced between 1973 and 1982, although it was still being sold in 83 because a few were still left and unsold. In those 10 years, it sold around about 620,000 units and it was sold with cars such as the Maxi and Marina. It was initially was going to be a Harris Mann design, a very stylish wedge-shaped design. However, unfortunately BL was running out of money at the time. So they used an old E-series engine and a bulky heater system from a marina and it created a very bulbous design. Now, the um, initially the Allegro was sold under the marketing of being uh, a new driving force for Austin. And there were three generations of it. There was the original, later on there was the Allegro 2, and later on, around about 1979, um, they launched the Allegro 3. That was marketed as Vroom, or as it says here, Zupa, Super Vroom. And there were various different versions, as you can see in this. There was the base model, there was the L, and there was a HL. The HL having these sort of like twin round headlamps there was also an estate and uh, there were manuals and automatics as well the brochure that we're going to look at today is actually from 1979 <clears throat> when the allegro 3 was first launched and this has got the dealer stamp from doncaster so let's open this brochure up and see what we can see Now this brochure is really quite a big brochure for uh, uh, just one model so I don't want to spend too long on each page but this is the first page um, it's a very strange um, it's the HL of course with the twin headlamps jumping into the air which is a strange one it really doesn't give it a very good look it makes the car look even more bulbous really uh, by this stage it was really outdated compared to uh, other models so they did struggle to sell it to be honest with you um, for many reasons it wasn't hatchback there were better cars out there there was the Escort and now there was the Astra and this was just falling further behind even by this stage really BL was starting to uh, design the Maestro um, so it was kind of like just a last leap if you like uh, for Allegro to just fill in that gap before the Maestro arrived Age is really showing um, the Allegro's base models, the 1.1s and the 1.3s. The 1.1 could be seen as a two-door, as you can see this red one. The 1.3 could be a two or a four-door. But this is really the, the start of the Allegro, the base model. And this is the next model up, and this could be the this is the L, and it could be had as a 1.3, a 1.5, or a 1.7, as a choice of a two or four door again, as a 1.3, the four door only as a 1.5 or a 1.7 actually. Um, he's talking here about that hydro gas suspension system to make it a little bit more comfortable, and it was it wasn't to Citroen standards, but that hydro gas did make quite a comfortable ride um a very 70s color uh showing this brown alone now we're kind of like late 70s now into the 80s but um still kind of like reminds me of the allegro the brown color this kind of reminds me <clears throat> particularly going back to that first picture it was had really horrendous nicknames one of them was the flying pig which i suppose was shown in that first picture um, very unflattering name and when it was in brown like this one it had uh, an even less uh, flattering name that I won't say here but anyway let's move on it's showing again the L here with the showing the seats in particular it goes on to say um, the automatic transmission is standard on the 1.7 um, it's an optional extra on the 1.3 and this is the estate so if you wanted a hatchback you really had to come to the estates and in my opinion this is kind of like the 
the most unusual and I would say my preferred design of all the Allegro's this estate with this lovely great big huge window on the back very practical it had the folding down seats as we're becoming more and more popular a two door though which is a little bit unusual I guess for an estate but kind of escorts were doing the same thing I always think it's strange having a two door estate car really as you tend to think it's more of a family vehicle and you think it'd be four doors but um, two door it is and with this also very brown dated interior um um, don't get me wrong, I don't dislike the Allegro at all. Some people say it's one of those worst cars in history, like the Marina. I don't think either of them are anywhere near worst car in history status. It's just unfortunate. It could have been a so much better car if British Leyland were better managed and they organised and had a better accounting system. These could have been fantastic cars, but um, it is what it is. This then folds out to give sort of more images of the Allegro estate, showing it as a very practical vehicle, no matter what you've done, if you've got a small business or if you're just a family vehicle. It's showing how practical that estate really is. We have the uh, range topper, the HL, again available as a 1.3, 1.5 or 1.7. As you can see, it's got that nice vinyl roof on there, and it's very distinctive with these twin round headlamps. It's also showing on here um, that if you get that 1.7 HL, it develops 90 brake horsepower, top speed 100 miles per hour, and a 0 to 60 in only 10 seconds. I don't really think that's that's a bad performance really for for this time. Also look at the uh, HL and it's showing there that it's got such things as a push button radio, um, a useful intermittent wipe uh, facility um, and such things as that hydromatic gas suspension. It was touted as kind of the range topping luxury version although really it wasn't very luxurious at all and it also shows the Allegro shortcomings with that uh, small little boot where really it should have been a hatchback. Here it's showing that automatic option. It's also showing some of Allegro's standard features that are not optional, um, such things as door handles and windscreen wipers and lights. It's a very strange page showing things you really wouldn't want a car not to have, but nevertheless, these are standard on the Allegro. And then finally on the very last page, it's showing the features at a glance, um, difficult, uh, different technical specifications. And then we're looking at sort of miles per gallon. Uh, so for example, uh, the 1.1 two door manual um, in urban driving would do 33.2 mile per gallon, um, all the way down to uh, an Allegro 1.7 L estate auto doing 27.8 miles per gallon so there we go the austin allegro so it soldiered on to around about um, march 1982 the maestro came out in november 1982 although the allegro was still being sold there were still lots of unsold allegros around and indeed it was still being sold in 1983 when uh, Maestro sales were well underway. It really struggled to sell at the end. But it's not surprising when you compare it to uh, similar years of the Escort um, and Astra. It was an old car by this stage. So, good and bad parts about the Allegro. Well, bad, it wasn't really the car it was going to be. Like so many British Leyland stories, um, it was all cost cutting. Um, and cost cutting and cost cutting um, and it really prevented it from being this great car it was all compromise and it produced a very bulbous um, unlikable shape really my own opinion i really like them i like the bulbous design um, i don't think it's anywhere near one of the worst cars in history i think it's a great looking car and the estate particularly really stands out i i really like the estate version of the legro i think it looked great 
maybe I shouldn't be saying this on on uh, on film and on YouTube, but I'll probably get some criticism for saying that. But I like the Allegro. I think it is what it is. Um, there were also uh, some good points about the Allegro. Amazingly enough, for a seventies car, the rust protection on Allegros were really, really good. Can you believe it? All the British Leyland cars were falling apart and rusting. And in fact, um, in the early days, um, it was reported to have been a very rust-prone vehicle, but it wasn't. It was a good rust-protected car. So they did last, and they certainly got some love because they lasted so well. Overall, it was a very unloved car, though, and most of them ended up in the scrapyard, but they did last much better than similar cars of the time. But thank you once again for watching Quarterlight. I always enjoy making these videos. I hope you watch, enjoy watching them. So please do like and subscribe. There's going to be much more brochures and videos coming up. Um, and indeed earlier versions of the Allegro will appear on the channel over time. So for now, uh, please do take care and we'll say goodbye.